y'all. Coming to you from International Headquarters, Scotty DTV. But I was up to 2022 Detroit Autorama, and I ran into my buddy Mike Copeland up there. Now, he's the one that is working on hydrogen power, a retrofitting system where you will be able to take a gas burning, diesel burning even, it sounds like, uh, engine and switch it over to burn on hydrogen. While he was telling me about this technology, I figured we'd take another look at the 1948 Chevrolet pickup truck that they have that is currently running on hydrogen power. Very cool. I'm excited about it. I'm not down with electricity, but I am down with zero emissions. And if we can do it and still have LSs and LTs and superchargers and turbo turbochargers, that's what I want. So anyways, let me get the camera turned around and let's listen to what Mike's got to say. Mike, how you doing, brother? I'm living the dream. Brother, I am too, and I can't believe I'm standing here right here talking to the godfather of the ZL1 Camaro. Yeah, you know, I didn't invent it, I just built it. Well, at the end of the day, <laughs> you, I can come up with all kinds of crazy <laughs> ideas, but they ain't never on the street. But no, two cars that everybody that's a motorhead has to respect, and that's the CTSV Cadillac and the ZL1 Camaro, and I'm speaking to the man that put them on the street. Let's put it that way. It may not have been your idea, but you made it possible. We did. Right. Yep. Yeah, I had some great great people I worked with, but for sure. You know. Everybody but, does have a good team yep. behind them. And yep. now you got some cool new technology coming around. Absolutely. Now tell me, you hear hydrogen power, the first thing we think of is the Hindenburg and it blowing up. So sure. let's get that let's just go ahead and get that elephant in the room out, out and talk about it. Is hydrogen more dangerous or less dangerous than what we currently use? Well, hydrogen is, is different than gasoline by a number of things. First, hydrogen is the lightest element known to man. So what that means is if you release hydrogen, it's going straight into the atmosphere as fast as it can travel, right? So there's a numerical system for identifying the weight of a gas. That system applied to hydrogen, and hydrogen is number two. There is no number one, okay. but they left the space just in case they found something lighter, right? right? So by weight, hydrogen is extremely light. The air around us that we breathe is a number 34. So that tells you that how far apart they are and how much heavier the air is than gasoline, or wow. than air, than hydrogen, right? right? So we, we use hydrogen in a gaseous state. It can be gas or it can be liquid. We use it in a gaseous state. In our specific case, we use it at 350 bar. And a bar is just a measurement of pressure. And so we're at Would five. Would that convert to PSI? So to yeah, it's 14 and a half PSI to a bar. Okay. Right? So we're at like 5,074 PSI when the tank's full. Holy smokes. Okay. But our tanks are certified. They're DOT certified. They're spun aluminum. They're coated completely on the exterior with carbon fiber. They have specific valves. The pressure's monitored. We have pressure releases if the pressure should ever get too high. And it doesn't go into the motor at 5,000 No, no. We regulate it down to uh, at 8 bar, so we're right. about 115 PSI. Just Which over. that's equivalent, right, to a normal? Um, most gasoline that we run uh, is in t typical fuel injected. It's about 58 PSI oh, okay. or 4 bar. Okay. So, but we're running... Uh, uh, and then when we do boost applications, we add boost to the top of that. So if you're at 58 and then you add 20 pounds of boost, now you're at 78 PSI. So okay. uh, I've built some stuff where we run it higher. You know, we run some in the, the 90 PSI range. When I built the uh, first World Challenge uh, Cadillac CTSV race car, we ran that one at 91 PSI. So but that was a 427. And, yeah. So, but you can play with that. It, it allows you to, to compensate for smaller or, you know, for having an injector that's not quite big enough. And there's some other things like that you do with the power. So, right. you know, specifically hydrogen burns three times as fast as gasoline. Okay? okay. It also contains approximately three times the energy of gasoline in a given volume. Okay. okay? So, uh, you know, a lot of people, when they think of the hydrogen, they think of the Hindenburg, right? right. Oh, my God. So because hydrogen is so light, it's very permeable, which means it will go right through whatever it's in. If you tried to, if, let's say you used a standard like stainless steel fuel line like your hot rod would have, and you put hydrogen in it, it will leak right through the stainless steel. Well, that's crazy. Yeah, but it's so, sm the molecules that make it up are so small, and it's so light, it's always trying to go up, and it'll, it'll go right through that. If, if you had a plastic fuel tank, it's an example. No, It'll yeah. go right through the tank and, and escape. To How do you keep it in then? Well, you have to have specific components, right? right? You have to have a tank that does that's designed for that specific purpose, and is, and then you have to have fuel lines. Yeah, every component that you use has to be. So it is possible to contain it. It is. It's right. just more different, right? Right. 
So in the case of the Hindenburg, they built a big cloth balloon, right? And then the, the hydrogen would just go right through the cloth. So they basically melted aluminum and coated the whole outside of it. And then they used seven other chemicals that were each one more flammable than the next. So they coated the outside of, of a cloth balloon filled with hydrogen with flammable material. Right. So when the Super flammable. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And it's conducted. Yeah. So when the Hindenburg hit the power line, it hit it with the aluminum. So it immediately just smoked it and burned a hole through it. The hydrogen woofed, of course, but it immediately escaped through that hole and went straight into the atmosphere. So then the Hindenburg, of course, crashed. People, you know, died. Mid 30s was the number right. that I that I saw. People survived. A lot oh, of people don't. Most know. survived. Right. Yeah. 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 But n virtually. It, it hasn't been identified that anyone was injured because of the hydrogen. Right. The hydrogen went up, people were down, right? Yeah. So when the thing crashed, that's when they got hurt. And then when it caught on fire, the cloth started burning, which in turn melted the chemicals and, and it was promoted to burn by that. All of that went down over the people and some of them burned because of that. Right. But imagine if the Hindenburg had been filled with gasoline. Holy smokes, they right? burned the whole town down. Right. So first, the gasoline is going to go down, coat everything underneath it. It's going to burn a minimum of three times as long. So it's going to set more things on fire. It's, it's, it's you know, people talk about hydrogen because it's so bad and it's so dangerous and everything yeah. else. If you really go out and research it and understand it, it's not. Right. right? Well, and that's why, that's why I want to talk to you about it. I want you to explain to people because obviously you're having some success with making horsepower with it. Yep. But... Again, I think the only example people understand of hydrogen is the Hindenburg. Right. But on the other side, it's not like you nobody's used it in hydrogen already. Well, and that's what people don't think about, right? So every fuel cell vehicle that exists in, in the basically in the world runs on hydrogen. So a fuel cell is basically you have a membrane, you inject hydrogen into the membrane, burn it inside the membrane, and then it that membrane creates electricity. So then that electricity is used to power wheel motors or into a battery pack, which is then used to power wheel motors. I see. So it's basically a form, a fuel cell is of generating electricity. Right. Right? All of those run on hydrogen. Oh. Virtually every Amazon facility, mm -hmm. all of the Hilos, all the fork trucks, have a fuel cell in them and they all run on hydrogen. No kidding. Yeah. They manufacture the hydrogen on site. So you can pull the moisture out of the air and generate and create hydrogen with it. You know, yeah, no, really? you can, and that's what they do. Some of the stations that exist, like there's 50 plus stations in California today that commercially sell hydrogen. Uh -huh. You can just pull up to the pump and hook your, hook your fuel cell vehicle up to it. Some of those stations, not all, but some of them actually manufacture the hydrogen on site. They pull the moisture out of the air, use it to create hydrogen, pump it into the tank, and then put it under pressure and pump it into your vehicle. No, there's no filling up. There's never any coming to it. You do you, think, do you it. think technology at some point could get to the point where cars would be the same way too? Oh, absolutely. Or you can make it on board? Yeah, absolutely. And you wouldn't even need water. You just pull it out of the air. Right. You just drive down the road yeah. keep making yeah. more and there's more. There's enough moisture in the air in the desert to generate hydrogen. No, kidding. Yeah. 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 And, and I know this is a layman, idiot question, but once you take the hydrogen out, does it read? rejuvenate itself again or it, is it, it once it's it, out it's it, gone it exits as water i know but when in the air will we eventually run out of no, air no. that has hydrogen there's in more it? base element to create hydrogen than anything else in the world oh, you were saying there's a byproduct of some things yeah well so there's there's multiple ways to make hydrogen and today there's basically three manufacturing processes so there's the standard hydrogen that we've had and has existed for years. And that's considered somewhat dirty, right? Because right. you use electricity or you tap a, a methane well and you get the top of it and, and that kind of stuff. Today there's blue hydrogen. And blue hydrogen is manufactured with a much, much, much reduced carbon footprint. Okay. okay? The next step of that, and it already exists today, is called green hydrogen. Green hydrogen is produced with zero carbon footprint. No. Yep. They use solar, they use some other things to create that electricity they use to de right. generate it. We take that hydrogen that's created with zero carbon footprint, we can put it in our truck and burn it in an internal combustion engine, 
we create zero emissions. We have no carbon monoxide, no carbon dioxide. Can you drink we, the water out of the tailpipe? You can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. They tell you you can. I haven't drank it. Right. But no, they I, claim I, I you got can. no use to do it either, but yeah. I just wonder. But yeah, they, they claim you can do that. But all that comes out of the tailpipe is a minuscule amount of N2O yeah. and water. Oh, what's N2O? Nitrous oxide. Oh, I like that stuff too. <laughs> I mean, nothing but it's good so, things. It's so out. small, you got to. It, it's really hard to measure even. Right. But, but the water that comes out, and once the exhaust comes of temperature, it exits as steam. So there's nothing dribbling. Oh yeah, no, no, no people. Because I had a friend ask me, well, what happens in the winter time? You're going to have yeah. water all over yeah. the road. You don't, because right. it just goes up into back into the atmosphere. Right, right, right. So yeah, it makes more. Hydrogen. Makes more hydrogen. That's yeah. crazy. Back to okay. our tank. So, so you, we see the tank that you have, and I know this is under experimental stuff, so you know, obviously that doesn't look the best, but that's what you're using. A tank that big, what would that equate to as miles that we, you could drive? Well, it's the tank, we have a three kilogram tank, and, okay. and at, three, at, at uh, 350 bar, it equates to about 16 gallons of fuel. Okay. Okay. Realize we're still developing and sure, we're sure, tuning sure. and we're doing yeah. all that stuff. Analytically, we should have three and a half hours of runtime on that on that three kilograms or sixteen gallons. Does it matter what RPM you're running it at? It does, yeah. but you know that's kind of a, a, a driving down the road kind of you. you know right. thing. I mean, idle it'll sit in idle for you know like anything for a long, long time. And if you're wide open and you got your foot in it, right? It's like any other fuel. There you go. You can use it quicker it, than yeah, exactly the same, right? Yeah. So hydrogen has some advantages. It, it doesn't really correlate to to gasoline from an octane number, right? Right. But right now, where where the truck is, we're running on straight hydrogen, and we're running. It's a it's a LS3. It's, it's we built it specific, but you don't. We we figured out we don't need all that high performance stuff in it. Right. We can run it. We can take a stock engine and run it on. Right. So, but we're running. Uh, 20 pounds of boost on top of a, a standard LS with no detonation. Wow. So is hydrogen a fuel that's allowing you to even make more horsepower? It will. You know, yeah. so hydrogen physically takes about 25% of the volume of the port to get it into the engine. We're doing port injection, right? Okay. So we have 16 injectors. We inject right in eight in the standard location that you would see, and then we have eight above. Okay. So we're running a Magnuson 2650 supercharger. We machined an adapter that lets us put eight more injectors in it that spaces the intercooler up. So that works really well in our application. You know, we're, we're able to run, take advantage of that. Remember I said hydrogen contains three times the energy. Right. It also burns three times as fast. So we're working uh, fuel mixtures and fuel ratios and, and timing curves and, and we're learning every right, day, right? Right, right? We're running the thing on the dyno all the time. And nice. So, you know, every parameter that you basically know for gasoline, we're different. I gotcha. Right? Like fuel mixtures, yeah. I think everyone knows 14.7 to 1 is right. kind of the norm for where you want to be with gasoline. Right. Right now, we're running between 75 to 1 and 100 to 1. On a fuel ratio, so. so you have to make it much richer. No, leaner. Leaner. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I got it. I got yeah. it. So the oxygen's the yeah. The, so the it's big fourteen point seven parts of air yeah. to one part of fuel. Right. We're at right. seventy five right. parts right. of air to one part. So of fuel. it's a lot more economical. Um, you know, you take you can take advantage of the fact that it has less. You can use that to your advantage. Right. You know, in the future, as we continue to develop and we go through things, there are things that that like flame travel is a big issue in engines, right? Okay. So it's and flame travel is the amount of time it takes when you light a spark for the fuel to completely burn across the top of that piston. All right. So in in a naturally or in a boosted application, either one of them, but about a four four inch, four and an eighth inch bore. Um, about 7,000 RPM, once you exceed that, or even as you get to that, the hydrocarbons go sky high because you're not burning all the all of the, the fuel. Okay. So some of it's going out the exhaust. Catalytic converters can get hot and they continue to burn that, which is why they use converters. Right. Right. In our case, we don't have any exhaust after treatment. There's no catalytic converters. Right. None of that's required. We, so if you, that 7,000 RPM is a sweet spot. With hydrogen, as we continue to develop it analytically today and what we're learning, we should, with supporting components, be able to run 20,000 RPM. Oh, no. And still have well, that. Well, the motor and all take it? Well, in time yeah. and with the right components. Right, you know? right. But we have the ability to do that, right? Right. We have the ability, when we go to direct injected, 
to control the combustion chamber more precisely, to change the piston design, to do all of those things to improve performance. So we believe when we go to direct injected, we'll actually be able to make more power on hydrogen than we do on gasoline. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Does it burn hotter or cooler in there? It, it depends on what you do with the fuel mixture, okay. right? Whatever so fuel it's the ratio same kind you're of at. Thing. Yeah, we've been experimenting with some things. We can control engine temperature with fuel mixture. We do it. We did a 20-minute run cycle, and we can set the fuel mixture and never get above 157 F right. on a 20-minute idle run with the fuel mixture in one position, and then we can superheat the engine really fast to get it up to temperature with a different fuel mixture. So no. there's there's so much to learn here. Right. And, you know, Bosch is helping me with this. They, you know, their engineering, I have their engineers, their engineering service division is supporting me in this. And uh, they're some really smart guys, right? right? They bring a lot to the table, obviously we support. And, you know, they, they I have their experimental injectors in it, and I have their computer. And fortunately, they can rewrite software, which we've had to do for the to deal with the different numbers that we need and everything else. But we support with the engine and all the all the fuel system and the fuel support and the regulators, and so we do all of that internally. So you make all that stuff yourself? Well, we select it all, and then we right. make the lines and we make the other things. Holy but, cow! So we're so you you're, you're at the point now. Obviously, you've reached one goal. You got the engine running on it and all that. Where yep. you what's got to the see fun? it drive in, did you? Yeah. Well, and I hear I'm one of the few people that have it actually driving and running. So and it came 4K. It came out good. So I'm I'm happy with that. Yeah. Where where's the end goal? Do we are you hoping that at some point we're going to mass produce these and these will take over? You're going to be part of that, or are you just getting into a point that well, corporate I don't, America I don't know will yet. take it? Right. The, the, so my goal is to create retrofit kits oh, okay. to save the hot rod. Oh, okay. Right, right. If you got a '69 Camaro, you got a '32 Ford. Right. Right. Whatever you know, right, right. whatever you got. Right? right. If it runs on gasoline, there are 90 million registered gasoline burning internal combustion engine vehicles in the United States wow. now, right? Legislation could be passed and and it could make every one of them be have to be scrapped. Right. Right? Right. If there's no more gas, yeah, you know, you're going to you could mix it yourself, they can make it illegal to drive them because right, they right. pollute. Right. Any one of those things, right? So my goal is to develop a retrofit package that can be installed in all of these cars and make them zero emission. Right on. That's what we're working on. Now, yeah. we'll have to do, there's a savings of scale. These parts are really expensive. Sure. But their cost is coming down as we get further to, to, towards production. But the goal would be to, to retrofit fleets, like fleets of police cars, fleets of buses, right. all that kind of stuff, because it generates large volumes of parts, and therefore the price goes down. Right. So my goal is to do that, to generate, and, and it helps save the environment every piece you do, right? right? right, right. So do that, and then that helps create a savings of scale, and then we go and, and retrofit hot rods. Oh, wow, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? That's because the goal. Because you're offering a product where I would think people would be like, even if they haven't made laws against it, they still it, want. It. They'd still want it, right? right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it, and it's you know, if there's if there's not really a negative to it, right? Why would you? Nothing but positive, right? Yeah, free gas for the rest of life, right? right. Well, power, and, and theoretically, like you know, in the future. I don't know at what point, but you'll be able to generate your hydrogen right at your house. Man, yeah. Well, I like the idea of driving and, and, and making it at the same time, but sure, at my house yeah. would be great, too. Yeah. so you just plug in it and fill your car right at home. Right. There's no reason you can't. Can, now, and again, this is one of my dumb questions, but will diesel engines also run off of yes. hydrogen? No kidding. Yeah, they will. Well, this would just take over everything. You could still have the diesels and the regular engines and... Lawnmowers, one snowmobiles, fuel and... Motorcycles, weed whackers. And we're not going to have three different levels of there's just hy one. Hydrogen, hydrogen. Yeah. Yeah, there's, you know, traditional blue and green. Right, but right, right. In the future, it'll only be green. Right, right. But that's just the way it's being made, yeah. manufactured, right, right. not the product at the end. There you go. The product is the same. Right. All right. So, again, obviously, people, folks, you can follow Scotty DTV because I'm going to do all I can to promote mike and and this product but if people want to follow more direct mike what's the best way to do that uh, all of our social media so you can follow uh, uh errington performance you can follow my personal which is just mike copeland that's instagram facebook we have instagram facebook and everything for errington uh, we're shortly going to launch errington performance hydrogen.com so we already have the site just about finished and so but that's where the latest kind of information and a lot of shows like yours right. we link them right to the site awesome. so people will be able to go yeah, right great. there and get it and uh, spell errington for me a-r-r-i-n-g-t-o-n okay 
right. Yeah. So, but uh, you know, we're in, in the infancy, infancy, right? We launched this thing at SEMA last year. I don't think anybody expected we were going to do that, and I uh, kept kind of really tight to the to the vest. And uh, but I had, had a lot of conversation with SEMA, and they've been a great, great resource. They're really helping promote, and, and uh, you know, we're shortly going to be headed to the SEMA garage in California, and we're going to run a mission test. I've already met with CARB. SEMA brought CARB to me and everything, and we're going for a zero emission certification package. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, no, well, once I figured it out, because you know this year at SEMA Electric was everywhere. Yeah. So the first time I looked at it and saw zero emissions, I got PO'd and just kept walking. I was like, that's just another damn battery truck, you know? <laughs> but I ran into Susan, and she was like, no, Scotty, you got to see this. This is hydrogen, you know? Well, after I figured it out, I was just all over the moon about it. And I was even up in the media center talking to Juan about how excited I was. And he was like, oh, yeah, I know. But Mike wouldn't tell us anything about it before it got here. He wouldn't show us pictures. He wouldn't do nothing. He's like, whatever you do, Scotty, send those links directly to me because I want to help promote it too. So, no, you hope I know I'm the smallest of them. But, you know, you have the whole, you should have the whole hot rod world behind you, Mike. And, man, I'm excited to see where this goes. And please keep me in the loop, brother. We will do it, Scotty. Thanks again for giving me some time today. Anytime, my friend. Awesome. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and visit scottydtv.com for an easy way to search the hundreds of videos I have posted. Either click the link in the description or the one at the end of this video.